Greetings fellow guitar travellers, it's Rowan J Parker here with another episode of Rock Guitar Fundamentals which is all about the craft of learning to play the guitar. In this episode we're going to be continuing the work we started in the last episode which is all about the development of the left hand and the focus on this one is learning on how to use all four digits. You can use all four digits well um, and we've got five examples to show you. Before we get into the lesson, um, I'd like to encourage you to head on over to my website, which is www.rowanjparker.com. There is a whole ton of material on that site, most of which is free. There are backing tracks you can uh, download and so over. Uh, there's a whole ton of lessons. There's also a shop where you can purchase videos and books and uh, high quality HD lessons, which are all available for instant download. So check it out. You can also subscribe to my website. Um, to do that, you just stick your email address into the subscribe box and hit subscribe. Uh, and if you do subscribe, then you get access to a members only exclusive area of the website where I'll be posting up um, exclusive material just for subscribers. Won't be um, distributing it anywhere else on the web and to no one else, just my loyal subscribers. So get subscribing. All right, well, let's uh, get straight into today's lesson. Rock Guitar Fundamentals. Develop a monster, left hand, part two. Let's do it. Okay, now one of the main problems that I encounter as a guitar teacher when I have students who are you know, getting into developing their technique and they want to try and develop some good chops, the main problem is that they can't use all four digits equally. Um, a lot of the things that they learn, scales and so on, tend to be three notes on a string and it means that they don't seem to develop even strength and articulation in all four digits. So these exercises I've got here for you are designed to do just that, to develop articulation, strength, dexterity in all four digits. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you the first idea, which is an incredibly simple little idea. It's just a chromatic exercise in tenth position. Um, let me just go ahead and play it to you. Now, fairly obvious, it's frets 10, 11, 12 and 13, and we're going to play that across all six strings, okay? And the digitation, obviously, fingers 1, 2, 3 and 4. So it's a chromatic exercise, which is a great warm-up exercise for your left hand in the morning if your fingers are a bit sleepy. So what we're going to do here is the way that I would normally articulate all the uh, legato stuff is we will pick the first note and then the other notes will be either hammer-ons or pull-offs. So obviously when we ascend, it's going to be hammer-ons and when we descend it's going to be pull-offs, alright? So very simple idea, I'm going to pick the first note and hammer. Pick. And then the descent, just the reverse of that, pick, pull, 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 pick, pull, 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 pick, pull, pull, pull. So a couple of things you want to watch technically, um, ensure that the thumb is on the back of the neck of the guitar and you can spread your fingers out properly. It's not such an issue up here in 10th position, but if you start playing much further down, especially if you start playing down in 1st position, then it very much will become an issue. So get your thumb behind the neck um, in line with your second finger and allow your thumb to move with your fingers as you ascend through the exercise. So and you can see this clearly, but at the top of the exercise, my thumb, <laughs> you see that, my thumb is right there with my fingers. Now, the advantage of playing this way is that all that happens is your hand position stays exactly the same as you play up and down through the exercise and you don't change the angle of your arm or your elbow. Um, to, uh, if you kind of find yourself doing this, you're, you know, you're thumb stays where it is and your whole arm moves, then uh, check out the previous episode of uh, this series which we deal very much with, you know, good left hand technique. So that's the idea for the first exercise. When you're hammering on, try and make sure that the note that you pick is not excessively loud so it doesn't sound like, you know, you want to try and make the note you pick to be roughly the same volume as all the notes that you hammer. So 
so it doesn't sound like too obvious. A couple of other things to point out. Um, fret right at the edges of the frets. Don't fret too far back in the fret, otherwise you'll get fret buzz or a dead note. And the other thing is to use your fingertips. Fingertips only, all right? Don't use the pads of your fingers like this because it will look and sound terrible. You can always spot a poor guitar player if you see them do this sort of thing. Fingers are all flat and lots of hand motion this way, excessive hand motion. It's never going to be efficient. You're never going to get it, going to get it quick. So uh, that's the first exercise. I'm just going to demo this with a little metronome. Got a metronome at 150 beats a minute. And we're going to rattle up some semi-quavers and then we'll, uh, just for giggles, we'll attempt some uh, demi semi quavers and see if we can actually pull that off. Maybe we can, maybe we can't. We'll find out. So let's listen to the first exercise. Here we go. And double time. Phew, made it. So that's the first exercise. You really need to focus on the evenness of articulation so it all sounds, uh, you know, rhythmically even and also that the notes sound even and that you can hear all of them at roughly the same volume. So you might want to do what I'm doing here and that's just play with a clean sound and then you'll be really be able to tell how accurate it is because often if you use a lot of distortion, well, it compresses everything and uh, also it can mask the way things really sound. So it's a good idea to play this stuff clean because then you get to reveal all your technical weaknesses. All right, so that's uh, first exercise. We're going to move on now and look at the second one, exercise two. Okay, in exercise two, all we're going to do is move the index finger back one fret, so generating a tone interval between the first and second fingers, while the other two fingers, third and fourth fingers, are just going to be playing semitones, i.e. they're going to be chromatic. So this particular pattern is... 10, 12, 13, and 14. And as you might guess, we're just going to play this parallel across all six strings. stretch shouldn't be too hard because it's not so hard to move your index finger away from your second finger. This is what I would call a, an expansion backwards. So your index finger is really expanding backwards. So, so the way I would look at this is you're really in 11th position right now, but you expand the index finger back so it plays fret 10, but nevertheless you still really are in 11th position with the index finger expanding backwards one semitone. So since I've explained the technique and the articulation, um, in the last exercise, and that certainly applies to all the exercises, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, play it. All right, so 150 beats a minute again, we'll attempt those semi quavers, and then we will try to rip up the demi semi quavers. Let's have a listen. <laughs> So that is example number two. We're going to look at the third example now. Okay, so example number three is the reverse expansion of the previous one. So instead of us expanding our index finger backwards, what we're going to do is expand our fourth finger forward. Okay, so the notes we will get will be uh, 10, 11, 12, and then 14. That one, all right? So it's slightly trickier this one just because that your third and fourth fingers will, will be reluctant to separate. They don't really want to do that. You know, it's quite easy to get this to happen, index finger and second finger to move, but then to do the other way, oh, it's a bit difficult. So just uh, watch that third and fourth finger separation, all right? So uh, it sounds like. All right, so that's the idea. Um, Again, let's just demo straight with the metronome. Remember, everything that we've said so far applies. You want to keep it rhythmically even, and you also want to make sure you can hear all the notes articulated clearly. All right, so let's uh, rattle out with the metronome and see how we go. Thank you. 
So that is uh, number three, and let's look very briefly at number four. Okay, and here is the fourth exercise, which uh, now has got an expansion back with the index finger and with the fourth finger forward. So what we have is this shape. We have tone, semitone, tone, okay? Tone, semitone, tone. And once again, we're gonna play that across all six strings. So the frets we have, we have 10, 12, 13, and 15. I've actually posted up quite a number of little uh, licks and ideas using this interval. Um, I think there's at least three of them that you can find in some of my other lessons. So this one now is approaching something that's actually genuinely musically useful because the last three exercises, well, they've been cool, but um, maybe not very much in the way of actual immediate practical application. Other than to say that if you can improve your left hand chops to the point that you can play all this stuff easily, well then you're going to be able to certainly play much quicker, much better articulation, probably be able to express yourself a lot better. So although some of these are exercises, and usually I dislike practicing just something that's an exercise, which I, I'm not going to have a immediate practical application for, I think in this case it's perfectly valid because we need to develop that left hand. All right, so, um, Got a bit of a sidetrack there, but what we've got is 10, 12, 13, 15, and across all six strings. I'm sure you get the idea. All right, so once again with the metronome 150, here we go. to do now number five which is unfortunately the killer so let's go ahead and do that one well I think you can probably see where this is going now because we've sort of incrementally increased the span between all the fingers so the last one yep we're gonna put an expansion between the second and third fingers right which is gonna be pretty nasty because the fingers don't want to do that really so what we've got is a uh, 10 12 14 and 16 which is some sort of demented whole, town, whole tone sounding thing. And we play this across all six strings. All right, so that's that one. That's a real killer to get the articulation for this one good, as you'll probably hear when I attempt to play it with the metronome. All right, so let's just go ahead and demo this to you. Let's have a listen. at the end to try and get that to articulate. You can hear that uh, even though the left hand's pretty good, struggling maybe a little bit to get everything to come out clearly. Sure a little bit of distortion would help that. Not that we're hiding behind distortion, you understand, but it can help to even things out a little bit sometimes. All right, well, that's the last one. Now obviously I appreciate for some of you these are going to be quite, quite difficult. Um, the way I suggest you practice them is obviously start off slowly, metronome, and then just gradually incrementally increase the tempo. I know I'm playing these all very fast, it's not really about speed at the end of the day, it's about accuracy and articulation and be able to hear all the notes, that's far more important than raw speed. Though if you do everything technically well, you'll find that yeah, the raw speed will come in time. All right, so um, just the very last uh, demo, I'm just gonna stick uh, the distortion on this time and uh, we're gonna rip through a couple of these exercises as fast as I can possibly do them and we'll just uh, listen to that for some giggles. All right, so let's do that. Now, actually, as a last thing to do in this lesson, let's give you something to play that might actually be musically useful because I'm aware that some of this stuff has been fairly, you know, musically abstract. So I've got a little uh, lick, which I've completely stolen from an absolutely amazing electric guitar player called Roy Marchbank, who I absolutely recommend you check out because he is totally, insanely immense. 
if you think the stuff that I can play is fast, you need to hear this guy, it's just ridiculous. So anyway, this is a Roy March Bank, a simple little idea, octave idea. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, play this to you, and uh, we'll uh, break it down and then we'll just demonstrate it at, you know, sort of increasing divisional tempi, as it were. Here's the lick, let's have a listen. <laughs> straightforward octave idea and it uses one of the shapes we did use earlier on so we've got uh, low E 8, 10, 11 and 12 and then on the A string it's the same 8, 10, 11 and 12 and this for me kind of outlines mm, debatable but F7 tonality works for this and then we just move this up an octave, exactly the same fingering and spread. So we've got 10, 12, 13 and 14, 10, 12, 13, 14. And up one more octave. Um, so we've got B, um, B 13, 15, 16, 17 and high E 13, 15, 16, 17. All right, very silly. And uh, the way we're going to play it is going to repeat the middle octave. So have a listen. And then. Okay. All righty. So that's what it is. What we're going to attempt to do is set the drums at 90 beats a minute and we're going to play semi-quavers and then we're going to play demi-semi-quavers and then we're going to play a group of 12 which I suppose would be a dodecuplet and then we're going to attempt insanely we're going to attempt 64th notes which would be hemi demi semi quavers I think. Yes. Alright, so let's see if we can in fact manage it with this insane little kind of dominant chromatic thing. All right, let's do it. division is just hard. <laughs> so good luck with it. Okay, well that concludes another episode of Rock Guitar Fundamentals. Uh, join me next time where we're going to start investigating the art of... Yep, sweet picking. Because uh, one of my YouTube subscribers has uh, really just asked me how I managed to get my sweet picking so, so clean and so fast. Well, that's very flattering of you to say that. Um, and I'm going to show you. So uh, check out the next episode of Rock Guitar Fundamentals. All right, so well, that wraps it up. Um, before I go, um, you can contact me in other ways apart from uh, you know the website and subscribing to the website. I'm on Twitter, at Ryan J. Parker. You can find a lot of my material and backing tracks to download on SoundCloud, which is uh, Ryan Dash Parker. And uh, I'm also on Facebook, of course. So Facebook is a Facebook page, Ryan J. Parker, which you can like if you like. All right, well, thank you very much. It's been a blast showing you this. I've had a fun time, especially playing that last lick, which is awesome. Thanks to Roy for that one. All right, and I'll check you next time for another episode of Rock Guitar Fundamentals. So in the meantime, farewell and happy middling. Bye-bye.